Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Mass Effect 2. It's uh, my second Mass Effect session of the day, meaning over the past three days I've played four Mass Effect sessions because I just can't get enough of this game. The second time round I seem to be having a much more enjoyable experience. Probably because I'm helping it, I don't know. Anyway, last time we left off we visited the Citadel once again and re equated ourselves with Councillor Anderson. Uh, it turns out he's having a bit of a hard time, as I watch the fish while I talk. Uh, he's having a hard time with the council. Of course, we didn't really expect him to be the lone representative of the council. Obviously, to try and fit in, they would welcome other races back into the council to create a new council. But it appears the other council members are not totally uh, happy with the way things were conducted back in the... Uh, two years ago when we had the big battle of the Citadel and of course the previous council uh, was uh, killed. <laughs> They're not obviously happy about that and they refuse to believe that the Reapers are a threat. So we're pretty much back to square one really. Anderson still believes us but he is just one man on the council and he feels as if he is banging his head against a brick wall. We explored the rest of the uh, of the Citadel, found ourselves a couple of model ships a little space hamster. Look at him. Hello. And he goes back inside. I'm still waiting for the name because obviously I'm playing this uh, shortly after the last session, so the last session isn't uploaded, so I don't know what his name is, but soon enough you will give him a name for me. And we picked up a few bits and bobs in the shops. We went shopping. Didn't pick up everything because some of the things were quite expensive, but we will take a look at some of the gear that we may be able to get now. So we can now put on a different chest plate apparently. The Aegis chest plate, which gives us increased health by 5% or increased power damage. Now let's see, is the arms increase spare ammo capacity by 10% or health by 3%. Legs These increase health by 10%. It's quite a massive difference. I'm happy with the colours. I think I'm going to go for the life support webbing legs, which give me 10% health increase. Because I bought them, so it'd be a shame not to use them. Uh, for the gauntlets, I think I'll go for uh, increasing spare ammo capacity, maybe. And then for the chest plate, we'll go for this one. <coughs> Excuse me, that itchy nose. Sneezing here. Hey, just vest. Increase health by 5%. Okay. That should do us. And no helmet. For the rest of our up upgrades and updates, I think we have to be... Uh, oh, I think we have to have the uh, technician in the tech lab, which will be Mordin. Is it Mordin? Moradin? Mordin? Whatever he's called. Which we're gonna... We're gonna recruit him early. So yeah, we're done here. So we spoke about our crew members. Doing our bits and bobs. And we're now going to uh, head off. I did say at the end of the last part that we were going to go and get Mordin Solus. Go and try and uh, recruit him next. That was my next goal, but I have uh, gone through the log, mission log, captain's log and I have decided that there is something slightly more pressing something that Shepard would really like to do and that is pay his respects at the Normandy crash site so uh, he's gonna make a, an emotional reunion with his uh, previous ship and also look for those medallions of lost uh, crew members and even maybe Presley Presley's medallion might be there so that is the first order of the day, so without further ado, as I like to say, let's bring forth the navigation map music, which makes a, uh, a fond return. I hope they've got it in Mass Effect 3, I have to say that much. And we're going to jet off through the fuel depot. Gonna, no, we don't need to do that. Fine. Through the mass relay, and we're going to plot a course to... 
Where is it? Here it is, to the Omega Nebula, which has been explored only 10%. So we're gonna plot a course back. To where we started. And then we're going to have to find... Uh, there we go, the Amada system. Are these all the systems in the uh, in the Omega Nebula? Quite a lot. Right. We're jetting off to the Amada. Uh, there we go. The Amada system, which is part of this cluster. <laughs> Clusters and systems wreak a return, causing me nothing but nightmares and headaches. Okay. So we're gonna explore all unexplored planets. Now, there's one thing I remember about this game which was extremely uh, frustrating, and that was how we had to scan and uh, the, the planets to get the minerals. It's a very tedious process, especially before you can upgrade your scanner's speed, and therefore I want to cut them out of the, of the LP. You don't want to see me scanning every single planet, but I will read the descriptions. So first of all, we've got Angea. Typical ammonium methane ice giant, traces of chlorine in the atmosphere give it a distinct green tint. Penetrating scans have revealed large numbers of hollow, unpowered objects with dimensions of 3.14 by 12.56 by 28.26 meters circulating in equatorial cloud bands. These objects appear to have sails or wings attached, allowing them to be borne aloft by Angea's winds. While they are too deep to be reached for study, Popular conjecture in Xenar archaeological circles holds that they are coffins of an ancient race who laid their dead to rest in the gas giant. So that's Angea. As I say, I won't scan them now. What I'll do is I'll scan them all at the very end and cut it off. Uh, what else have we got? There we go. Carora. Essentially a giant rock in space, tirelessly locked to a marder. The only notable feature is a chain of craters stitching across the northern hemisphere, thought to be the result of impacts by a swarm of meteors. No mineral wealth beyond common light metals. <coughs> Nothing quite remarkable about that. We jet across slowly but surely to the next planet, which is... Tachan. Like a cricket ball. <laughs> Orbiting close to the F class star Amara, Tachan is a blistering, sun blasted hell. Neither its carbon dioxide atmosphere nor its weak magnetic field provides any protection from the star's harsh radiation. Fortunately, Tachan has few significant resources and is only notable for an unusual purple desert in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> southern? Thought to be the result of eroded speserite. Speserite. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't read. And uh, next we have a green planet called Aingana. Apparently it's a hot, beautiful and deadly world covered with debris of ancient starships. Approximately 127,000 years ago a series of battles were fought over it by two organic species, the Thoihan and the Inusanon. Although no records of the conflict remain, most historians agree that both races wanted to colonize Ingana and neither were willing to share. The two lost hundreds of ships in a series of battles. The Mass Effect drive cores of these ships broke apart, dumping refined element zero over large stretches of landscape. This poisoned the environment and a wave of extinctions followed. Many of the animal species that remained showed a tendency to develop biotic powers. This makes colonization a deadly peril. So it is habitable. And last but not least, I think um, I think the last planet will be Alchera itself. So there we go. I have detected an anomaly. Detected. Oh, it, it is chirping up here. Alchera's crust is composed of carbon and water ice. While low density, its large size allows it to retain a thick atmosphere of methane and ammonia. 
nothing really else of interest. Okay, we're going to have to start the scanner to be able to land, I think. Oh, how do we scan? Oh, hold left trigger to scan. Normally. I just scanned it, I need to turn this bloody thing around. <laughs> There we go. Is this it? Can we land this? Launch probe. Probe away. Research, Research projects and iridium is used to upgrade heavy weapons, submachine guns, and assault rifles. Well, can we land? Ah, there we go. Ah, it's all complicated. It's all rather complicated, this new system of <laughs> traversing the planets. I'll have to get used to it again. Unfortunately, this mission will not be action-packed. We are merely uh, revisiting our previous ship. It's going to be a rather morbid and nostalgic feel to this mission. <laughs> What I do remember about my first playthrough of this game, and this particular mission, was the fact that I struggled to find a couple of the tags, and I was looking for, it must have been at least half an hour. I hope I don't have that same performance again. Oh my god! It's the Mako! Why have I got my gun out? Put it away! <clears throat> this is not time for wielding weapons. This is a time for, for mourning, for for reminiscing. Is there a map? Explore the crash site. Locate a suitable place for the Normandy mon Monument and recover any sign of the 20 lost crew members. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while, so... Uh, I suppose I want to uh, try and make it as methodical as possible in terms of uh, knowing which areas I've covered and which areas I haven't covered. But I think we're just going to go with the flow. What's over here? I saw a sparkly bit over here somewhere. See, I've already lost my way and I've barely stepped foot here. There we go, it's over here. Dog tags are scattered high and dry. Rosamond Draven. Okay. So I have one dog tag. Oops, how do you get up? How do you get up? Press B to place the monument. What, what here? 